A few weeks ago, I was honored to be interviewed by renowned customer service expert, Shep Hyken, on an episode of his podcast, Amazing Business Radio. We talked about a variety of topics focused on feedback and customer experience, including the role online reviews now play in purchase decisions. In this video, I'll dive into that a little more and discuss how businesses can actually embrace the sometimes confounding online review process. Hey there, Jeff Robbins with another episode of Feedback Matters, the YouTube channel of Database Sciences and our web-based feedback services, guest insight for the hospitality industry, and listen keenly geared towards small businesses in a variety of industries. Over the years, we've talked about how much managers and business owners have often fretted over online reviews. We've done our own primary research on this. I'll put a link in the description box below if you'd like to take a look at the results. Here are some of the key issues that come up. I'll frame them as questions for you and your business. Are you completely satisfied with how your business is reflected in online reviews, the number of five-star reviews you get, the number of less than five-star reviews you get, the total quantity of reviews compared to how many guests or customers you have, and how do these numbers stack up against businesses you consider competitors? Finally, how often, if ever, are you frustrated by a negative review or comment that you read about your business online? So if none of these things concern you, most likely you're not watching this video, but good for you. However, if you've experienced some level of frustration around the questions I just raised, let's keep going. So inherently, online reviews and the methodologies by which they are posted are fraught with problems and have been from the day they first showed up on the internet. There have been many published instances of false, fake, and unscrupulous review shenanigans over the years. And yet, we find ourselves living in a time when more than 90% of new purchases of goods, services, travel, dining, entertainment are made after consulting online reviews. What do we do? There are two basic tactics businesses can take with regard to online reviews. The first is to play defense, which is how most businesses deal with them. Basically, they have a procedure in place to look at what's popping up on the review sites and respond or not to both bad and good reviews. There are a number of reputation management services out there that offer tools to help with this. And the other way businesses can choose to deal with online reviews is to take an offensive or proactive approach. This is what we advocate, proactively taking steps to understand how your customers view the experience you provide and encouraging people to leave reviews. Look, in today's economy, pricing has become mostly transparent for consumer goods and services, including dining and travel. Consumers are walking around with devices in their pockets that are giving them instant access to data that will help them make informed purchase choices. Guest or customer experience is now very often the differentiating factor in purchase decisions and the reviews are largely where they're going to become informed about customer or guest experience. You have to do your best to make sure that the reviews show prospective new guests or customers the experience you provide. All right, a little side note here. I'm making the assumption that you are providing a great customer experience. As managers, we must constantly know where we stand with our customers or guests and make sure we're giving them what they want and expect and fix it when we're not. To that point, there's somewhat of an old school mentality that we still sometimes run into. Managers who are afraid of opening up a can of worms by soliciting feedback. They're afraid of opening a complaint channel. Yeah, well, that's part of what we have to deal with in today's economy. Hey, it's better to try to deal privately with an unsatisfied customer and have to read about it in a public review and control the damage from that point forward. And so this idea is why we think of this offensive approach as staying ahead of the online reviews. And this is how we do it. Businesses should think of asking customers for feedback as a transactional event. That is, a request for feedback should happen after every sale 
every meal served in restaurants, every stay in hotels and inns, every purchase in stores. It should take the form of a dedicated thank you note coupled with a request to share feedback about the overall customer or guest experience. And this is key, this thank you and request for feedback should not be bundled with any marketing message or attempt at an upsell. Why? In essence, the request for feedback really then becomes part of the customer experience you provide. Just the act of a dedicated thank you message and ask for feedback shows your appreciation and caring for the customer perspective and desire to meet or exceed expectation. So what's the best way to do this? Well, there are plenty of options out there, from free do-it-yourself tools to feedback platforms like ours that are scalable and fit every sized business's budget. We'll cover the pros and cons and costs and benefits of them in another video. But here are some guidelines to successfully integrating a transactional feedback loop into your business. One, be timely. The thank you and request for feedback should follow the transaction in an appropriate time frame for your type of business. Hospitality within a few days max. In retail, it actually depends on the type of products that you're selling. Two, as mentioned earlier, keep the message pure. Show your customers how important their perspective of the experience you've provided is to you. Three, make sure that the feedback survey is short and to the point and provides feedback that is actionable. Rely on professional resources to help you with this. Remember, most of your customers don't have the time to complete anything more than a few minute survey. As we like to say, respect your customers' inboxes and their time. Three, make sure you provide an easy, personal way for the customer to get in touch with you outside of the survey to resolve any issues with the transaction or experience. This is a key element in staying ahead of reviews. Without a mechanism like this, you could be reading about a fail in an online review rather than an epic save that your feedback loop enabled. Hey, we all make mistakes. It's how we handle and learn from them that separates the great businesses from others. Four, be responsive both to any customer that takes advantage of the communication channel you've opened, as well as to the feedback you're receiving in general about the guest or customer experience you provide. Take action on what your customers are telling you. Five, encourage your guests or customers to share feedback to the publicly available review sites appropriate for your business and point them to them. You want the reviews to portray a vital business that is providing great customer or guest experience to potential new customers. And that's it for this framework to take a proactive transactional approach to feedback and online reviews. Look, the curtain is raised. There's no hiding any secrets anymore. Be the best you can be for your customers. Regularly ask them how you're doing. Make adjustments and the reviews will take care of themselves. Remember, at the end of the day, your customer's perspective of the experience you provide is the only one that really matters. And that perspective is guiding potential new business to your door. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video today. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel if videos and topics like this interest you, and we'll see you next time on another episode of Feedback Matters.